Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to talk about a very popular pastime in mainstream mathematics because it's not mathematics and it's this uh, nonsense about limb, limb sine x over x as x goes to zero. Okay. Well, they normally write it down as one, but this year doesn't have anything to do with limits. Okay, so it's got nothing to do with limits, and I'll explain that to you now. So, if we're looking at a right angle hypotenuse triangle, we need to ask ourselves when is in fact, because if we need to ask ourselves, when is in fact uh, y equal to arc a? Because what we're looking at is we're looking at y over r, which is sine of theta, and we're looking at theta, which is expressed as arc over r. Okay, so I've written here arc a over r. So this is the ratio we're looking at, which actually reduces to y over arc a. And <clears throat> when we look at the algebraic man manipulation, what we have here is y over arc a times 1. And of course, the only time this can be 1 is if y and arc a are the same. So this fraction can only equal 1 if y is equal to arc a. And the only case when that happens is when uh, the angle is 0. But there's a problem there, okay? There's a problem there. So you, you'll say, well, why is there a problem? Well, Look, there is no, <laughs> there's no, if you have, if you have a, 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 an angle like, a right angle like that, this is theta, right? But if you move this uh, ray and so that it overlaps on here, you don't have a right angle. So you, you can't really have a sine of zero because there is no right angle there. It's a, a similar story with the sine of 90, okay? So the sine of 90 would be uh, the opposite, but there's no opposite here, you see. There's no opposite here. This angle here doesn't have an opposite. And again, down here with 0 doesn't have, <clears throat> doesn't have an opposite. So you can't say y over r because y is 0. Now, In mainstream mathematics, they don't care about that because they just look at this. They just look at that particular point and they say, you know what? We don't care about right angle triangles anymore and how the ancient Greeks defined these things. We're just going to say, oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. I'm trying to draw on there. Okay. We're just going to say, we're going to look at X, Y, and r, and we're just gonna say sine is y over r, okay? So, and, and and that's what they do when they come down here and they say, whoops, zero, because they're not looking, they don't care if there's a, a, a an actual right angle triangle. So <clears throat> uh, the explanation is that the only time when this ratio here can equal to 1 is if y is equal to arc a and of course also at uh, uh, 90 degrees where there is no right angle and we're just assuming that y is 1 which is the opposite but there is no opposite and also at uh, 3 halves pi where it's minus 1 but it's not defined you don't get a 1 on uh, on the x-axis. So you don't get a 1 at 0 or at 180 degrees. And as I said, <clears throat> now, in algebra, you don't, you, you can end up in a pickle because when you deal with 0, it's not actually a number. And of course, sine x over x is not actually a function in its most simplified form. And if you take, take Newton's sine series and you divide it by x, this here, this here is is what you get okay the one minus one minus x squared over three factorial 
So that's the function. Sine x over x is equal to that, and therefore sine 0 over 0 is defined because it, it means the same as just tossing away every other term except the first term. And of course, um, if f0 is this function here, if f of x is this function, then f0 is 1. Now, that's using sine's crappy, uh, that's using Newton's uh, crappy sine series. However, there is a better way, and that's using Gabriel's, that's me, by the way, that's using Gabriel's uh, closed form sine formulas. Now, <clears throat> this x here is expressed not in degrees or radians. It's expressed in radical angle units, and you can find out all about that in this article here. It requires quite a bit of study, so I'll place a link to it, and my goal is not to discuss it, but it's very simple to see why sine over zero is one, and we all we need to do is we need to just disregard, okay, we just disregard this term and this term, and one over the square root of one is one, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, ultimately, there is no such thing as limb of sine x over x as x goes to zero because there, there is no such thing as an indeterminate form. This is not indeterminate. This is nonsense, okay? It doesn't exist. It's total bullshit that comes only out of mainstream mathematics, okay? And they're all syphilitic in their brains. They don't understand mathematics. They never have, and they never will. So that's pretty much it. Now you know why sine of x over x is equal to 1 if you place, if you disregard x as a number, okay? So that means if you just say, okay, goodbye, x as a number. In other words, you're treating 0 as not a number or no number, and you're ending up with sine 0 over 0 being 1, all right? So <clears throat> if you're not already a raised subscriber, become a subscriber. Tell your friends about this channel and uh, follow me on Academia. This is this channel here, this uh, website here. You can find all my articles here, okay, at this link. And I'll place also a link to, to the articles in here. There are many, many fine articles, over 252 papers, one book. And I'm one of the top read authors on the site. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, my name is John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.